every generation will not be confused there is a generation that will get this thing said the compressed coffee from that day the creative dimension of the prophetic there must be a performance because is the Holy Spirit number one the Holy Spirit is God Acts chapter 5 from verse 3 to 4 please the Holy Spirit is God this was the story of Ananias and Sapphira we are proving that the Holy Spirit is not just an archangel there are many well-meaning sincere people who have carried teachings all around the Holy Spirit is not an archangel the Holy Spirit is not a man the Holy Spirit is God in every way he's not junior to God he's not one of the errant people in heaven he is God in every way but Peter said Ananias why has Satan filled thy heart to lie to the Holy Ghost are you saying that now and to keep back part of the price of the land verse 4 whilst it remained was it not thine after it was sold was it not in thine own power why hast thou conceived this thing in thy heart thou hast not lied to men but to God Peter now says you have lied to the Holy Ghost and then you have lied to God the Holy Ghost is God in every way number two very quickly who is the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit is the manifestation of the presence and the power of God the Holy Spirit is the manifestation of the presence and the power of God he is not just the manifestation he is the revealer of the presence and the power of God the Holy Spirit Benny Hinn calls him the unlimited presence of Jesus how true based on scripture he gives omnipotence to the presence of he could only be in one location at a time but now the Holy Spirit has come to multiply the influence of Jesus across the earth he is the continuation of the ministry of Jesus but now not just localized to one man he can be everywhere at the same time so the Holy Spirit is a revealer he is also the manifestation of the presence of God are we learning this is very very important number three very quickly who is the Holy Spirit the Bible calls the Holy Spirit the wisdom of God this is very powerful wisdom the wisdom of God Isaiah chapter 11 and verse 2 Isaiah 11 and verse 2 and the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him he says the spirit of wisdom the Holy Spirit is called the spirit of wisdom that means he is the life-giving force behind every manifestation of divine wisdom there are three levels of wisdom as the Bible teaches there is wisdom that comes from above that is first pure there is wisdom that is scientific Sophia that comes with experimentation and experience there is wisdom that is diabolical and demonic the wisdom we are talking about is wisdom that comes from above are we together the spirit of wisdom Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 17 Paul is praying now Ephesians 1 and verse 17 that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom so the Holy Spirit is called the spirit of wisdom next point who is the Holy Spirit this is a very very important point I'm about to bring about the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit is the author of Scripture the Holy Spirit is the authentic author of Scripture not just Paul not just David the psalmist not just Matthew Mark Luke and John the Holy Spirit is the author of Scripture 
second peter chapter 1 please and verse 21 second peter chapter 1 and verse 21 second peter 1 21 hallelujah you can't find it go to second timothy chapter 3 from verse 15 second timothy 3 from verse 15 and that from it child thou hast known the holy scripture which is able to make thee wise unto salvation listen carefully through faith which is in jesus christ next verse it says all scripture how many all scripture old testament the gospel acts of the apostles the epistles revelation all scripture is given by inspiration of god by inspiration of god is profitable for doctrine reproof correction instruction in righteousness verse 16 it says 17 now that the man of god may be mature and furnished unto all good works i don't know why they didn't find second peter is a mistake from me it says holy men wrote as they were inspired of the spirit so holy men only did the writing the author was god how many of you have seen people who translate the messages of others into books the translators cannot say the book is their own is that true the original person thank you second peter 1 21 for prophecy came not in the old time by the will of man but holy men spake as they were moved by the holy ghost if you help me transcribe my thoughts into a book you will be rewarded for your intelligence but the creativity and the intellectual property remains my own is that true so who really is the author of scripture no it can't be peter it can't be john they were moved by the holy spirit why is this important because if you ignore the holy spirit in an attempt to learn scripture you will end up in error listen carefully the source of error the real source of error is to just be scientific about the bible and ignore the person of the holy spirit in as much as the bible is truly an archaeological book a historical book a piece of literature but it is empowered with mysteries that only the author can unravel if the holy spirit does not assist you in opening scripture then you find out that you'll be reading history you'll be reading archaeology you'll be reading literature poetry and not have the requisite level of edification that comes with this this book is both closed and sealed you can open it but only the holy spirit can unlock the seals are we together the holy spirit is the author of scripture that means the next time you open your bible to study the publishers of this book were not the authors of the book they only made it available to us holy spirit you are the author of scripture open my eyes and you will be surprised at the things that you will see it says open down my eyes that i may behold wondrous things from out of thy law is god blessing us the holy spirit is the author of scripture now the holy spirit was revealed in the old testament like we know he came upon great men and women to do exploits but the character of his manifestation listen carefully you would notice that there was hardly a description of deep intimacy and fellowship with the holy spirit in fact the person who came closest as far as relationship with the holy spirit is concerned was david the man david cast me not away from your presence he said take not your spirit from me are we together but generally speaking the holy spirit would come upon men in the old testament prophets priests kings and then he would perform something supernatural through them and return back so they knew his power but they did not have the opportunity to know and learn the holy spirit in a very intimate way they experienced the power of the holy spirit but they did not have the privilege of what we call today koinonia the fellowship of the spirit hallelujah are we still together 
Christianity becomes a religion if and when the ministry of the Holy Spirit is ignored. It is the presence and the ministry of the Holy Spirit in this faith work that gives excitement to this adventure. He is responsible for the exploits that men and women command in this kingdom. Write this down, please. It was the Holy Spirit who birthed the church. Romans chapter 8 and verse 15. You also find that in Acts chapter 2 from verse 1. The Holy Spirit was the one who birthed the church. The Bible says, For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby as a family we can now cry, Abba, Father. He brought us into this family. Acts chapter 2 and verse 1, when you read the Bible says, When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were gathered together in one accord. Suddenly, verse 2, there came a sound from heaven as of a mighty, a rushing mighty wind. It filled the house where they were sitting. There appeared unto them cloven tongues as of fire, and it came and sat on each of them. Uh -huh. Verse 4, the Bible says, And they were filled with the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Ghost the church and if the church ignores him today then we'll become something else aside the church are we together we must bring back to our consciousness the person and the ministry of the holy spirit beyond religion beyond the fivefold let me tell you this the holy spirit is not a privilege of men and women of god in the gospel no the Holy Spirit is for everyone. He's not just for pastors, apostles, prophets, believer, and non-believer, and creation generally speaking. It's more than just the salvation experience, as you'll be learning shortly. Are we together? Praise the name of the Lord. Because for many people, the moment you begin to talk of the ministry of the Holy Spirit, here's what they tell you. I'm not called into ministry. Just leave me. I'm a businessman. I will keep giving you money while you keep knowing him and go and do your crusade there show us the ancient path will you lead us along we want to follow the ways of jesus we want to enter your rest will you show us the ancient path Will you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the footsteps of Jesus. We want to end. Now listen, the Holy Spirit is not only God. I want you to know that the Holy Spirit is a person. He has the attributes of personhood. This is very powerful. The Holy Spirit, I've told you here that he's not just wind. He manifests as all those elements, but he's not them. The Holy Spirit has the attributes of person, of personhood. He has a personality. What makes someone a personality? The presence of a will, the presence of emotions, the presence of an intellect. There's no time to begin to deal with this, but let's, I, I've, I've done the, this teaching um, describing the personhood of the holy spirit but for the sake of what we're dealing with tonight let's just look at it one scripture each wheel number one acts chapter 16 from verse 6 to 7 please very quickly help us we're proving that the holy spirit is a person the bible says when they had gone throughout all the region of galatia they were forbidden of the holy ghost he has a will the holy spirit forbade them verse 7 it says and after they were come to all of those names they went to those places but the holy spirit suffered them not he restrained them the holy spirit has an independent will it's very important first corinthians chapter 12 and verse 11 first corinthians chapter 12 and verse 11 11 but all these walk at that one and the same self spirit dividing to every man severally as he wills the holy spirit has a will the holy spirit has emotions ephesians 4 and verse 30 ephesians 4 and verse 30 the holy spirit has emotions the bible says grieve not the holy spirit 
if he was not sensitive to that action the bible would not ask you to not grieve him he says grieve not the holy spirit of god whereby you were sealed unto the day of redemption the holy spirit has intellect intelligence romans 8 27 romans 8 27 the bible says he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the spirit why because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of god he knows what is the mind of the spirit first corinthians chapter 2 from verse 10 write it down please first corinthians chapter 2 from verse 10 we're looking at 10 and 11. the bible says but god had revealed them to us by his spirit for the spirit searches there is intelligence with the spirit the holy spirit is not a robot there is intelligence to him he searches all things yea the deep things of god for what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of man which is in him even so the things of god knoweth no man Thank you for watching our entire video today. If you feel you can bless someone, please join us and spread the gospel by sharing this video on your social media.